Jill through. Oh, she's going to pull out. I was just wondering. I was going to say if she could just get maybe another lap and a half, two laps, then it wouldn't really drop the pace. But sadly, it looks as though she's done. Well, that is just about perfect. Another 2.48 there, that third kilometre. 8.26 at 3,000 metres. Remember when Kip Yegon ran the 14.05 world record in Paris back in early June, it was a very, very warm day, possibly too warm for her uh, perfect conditions, but these conditions are supreme here, and she'll never get a better opportunity in this Segai, although she has got a long way to go now. Four and a half laps to run through this uh, second half of the race. Bouncing along those still, isn't she, Sega? Looking very, very relaxed. Now she has to make a decision here. Does she press on for the world record and maybe drag Chebet to victory and a world record? Or does she go for the win? I hope it's the uh, former. I hope here she really does push on with her strength and her aggression. We know she's fresh. She hasn't raced since Budapest when she looked tired in the 5,000 metres after her 10,000 metres gold. They come through here. Now watch this lap. They've been lapping in 67. If this one is significantly slower, then it just shows how athletes can switch off and ease back on the throttle when they uh, get to when the pacemaker drops out. 68.26, that one. That's the second slowest lap of the race. Yeah, I was watching the lights. We can see them a little bit better. It was interesting. We were chatting to Inga Britson yesterday, and he said, I, I couldn't really see the lights. You know, it's, it's bright, it's sunny, um, but you can see the lights are just moving ahead of Sigai now. And uh, Chibet looks to me as though she's enjoying this. She's kind of staying with this pace. Not comfortably. This is hard. This is just right around world record pace. But it's just slipping a little bit. And Sigai, like you said, Tim, it must be thinking, I've got Chibet here. What am I going to do? The point, though, is that these two can lift. They can lift the pace in the last kilometre. And if the two of them are together, then we could still be in for something special here. I just got the impression down the back straight there that Sigai lengthened her stride a little bit. She's trying to stretch Chebet here. She knows that Chebet the Kenyan trailing her, who's got the perfect pacemaker through these latter stages, has got the big kick. Beatrice Chebet, just uh, half a stride behind, hasn't had to do any leading yet. You can see Segai there, the grimace, with three laps to go as she comes through. She's working hard, there's no doubt about that, but this is where the questions are asked, and this is where you've got to dig deep. This is where you can build towards a world record, or you can let the opportunity slip away. Is she going to push hard again here on this lap? As she approaches 4K at the top end of the back straight now, she knows, she will be well aware that she bets is there, but she will sense the Kenyan there, even if she hasn't had sight of her. I remember saying in Paris, Tim, that if uh, Kip Yegon was near 11, 15, 11, 16, she's got a chance. Well, look at that, 11, 16. They're right on this. They've got a huge opportunity. Look at Sagai. She's just seen that. She saw the clock stop at that time, and it's almost given her that little bit of impetus. She's going to come around with just two laps to go this time, and Chebet, for the first time, looks under real pressure here. Well, she's got the reward for hard work for these last three or four laps as Segai, the world champion at 10,000 metres. We knew she was super fast, but we know too that she's got enormous strength and she's playing to that at the moment, testing Chebet here. From three laps out, she started accelerating and she's winding it up and she will get an extra adrenaline. She'll get that drive, that surge of excitement, knowing she's broken the Kenyan and into the back straight. And the crowd here are loving it in Haywood Field. They've been kept abreast of the chance of a world record over the 12 and a half laps in the glorious sunshine of this supreme venue. A lap and a half to run, still bouncing. Many coaches would say bounces too much. A lot of vertical movement, but it matters not. She could be heading towards a world record here. A lap and a half to go. She's got separation. It's going to be very, very close indeed. I don't think the 14-minute barrier is going to go, but is she going to get that world record? Remember, the figure she's looking for, 14.05.20. Calling it early here, Tim. She's going to do it. I'm pretty sure crowd already on their feet. She is moving beautifully well. We'll be able to pick it up a little bit as well. You mentioned the 14 minutes. She's not going to be too far away from that, I don't think. She needs to run 65 for the last lap, and we could see a sub-14 minute. We are going to see a world record, though. Well, barring disaster, she's on the way to a world record here. It's good up, Segai. 
The world champion at 10,000 metres could be heading towards a 5,000 metres world record. She's broken the stubborn resistance of Kenya's Beatrice Chabet. Down the back straight now. I was going to say in glorious isolation, but she's lapping athletes. The crowd loving it. They're on their feet here in Haywards Field. She's still grimacing. Chabet in the background can only admire this from afar as she heads into the final 200 metres. She has that superb speed endurance. Remember, she's the world record holder for 1,500 indoors. 150 to run. The crowd willing her on. Watch the clock. 14.05 she needs. 100 to run. And it's going to be mighty close. Close to 14 minutes. Can we see not only the world record broken here, but a historic barrier as well? The clock is ticking. 55, 56. It's going to be oh so close. I think she's just going to miss 14, but she smashes. She pulverizes the world record. 14.00.21 is confirmed for Guda Segai, the 26 year old etches her name in the annals of history at this oh so difficult distance the meeting ground of middle distance and long distance and that is what it does to you Chabet there in second place laying on the ground trying to recover and Segai well she deserves that lift she really does brilliant pace making from Sinclair Johnson and Elise Cranny the US pairing to set that one up and Steve, that's not even close. And that is what you call pulverizing a world record. She's taken five seconds off that world record. Well, what a year <laughs> we've all had watching the middle and long distances being pulled apart by these incredible athletes. Sigai won the 5,000 world title on this track last year. That was a massive day for her. And then. She took the 10,000 meter title in Budapest. And don't forget, she moved up because she felt as though she couldn't contest the 1500 against Kip Yegon, against Hassan and others, and has found the fact that she is not only capable of winning the championships, but now here, smashed, as you said, obliterating the world record. Chibet was just outside the old world record as well, and was 30, 40 meters behind. Well, this crowd have been, well, they've seen some incredible distance running over the years. They've been brought up on the whole Prefontaine legend, but I'm not sure many of them will have witnessed anything like that.